welcome back to my channel. I am Astralo Gal and I am back with another video. Today's video is going to be all about the wounded healer, Chiron. And I've been wanting to make this video for so long now. I'm so happy I'm finally sitting in front of this camera filming this for you guys because I feel that there's a huge importance behind the messages that come from Chiron. So I think it's very important that we're aware of where Chiron is in our natal charts and how we can work to heal these areas in our life. All right, so a little bit about Chiron. Chiron was discovered in 1977. Chiron is a comet. Chiron orbits between Saturn and Uranus. Chiron in our natal charts points to where we feel most wounded in this lifetime. It's where we may feel the most shame. It's where we may feel the most guilt. It's where we may feel this never-ending sense of pain that we feel we can't get away from. So Chiron is one of the four known asteroids in our birth chart. Chiron is an icy comet that lies between Saturn and Uranus. And there's this idea or this metaphor that the reason Chiron dances between Saturn and Uranus is because it wants to be known that the two planets are related in healing. So there's a sense of higher and lower consciousness. Once we overcome these obstacles and once we face where we need healing, we can then be liberated and enlightened on how to work with these deep wounds we hold and we carry. This is not going to be about getting over these problems. This is going to be about recognizing where we are experiencing pain and working with these insecurities to heal them. The symbol for Chiron is shaped like a key and it has this K sort of figure on the top. The meaning behind the symbol is that you're unlocking your deepest wounds so that you may heal. You're tapping in and working with these deepest wounds so that you may then in turn help and heal others. As you turn this pain into wisdom, you're unlocking your power to deep inner peace. So where your Chiron lies in your birth chart is going to determine where you may feel most wounded, where you may feel a huge sense of pain, embarrassment, guilt, fear. And there's going to be this sense of feeling like you can't heal from this. It probably shows up many times throughout life, gaining your attention or putting you in situations where you feel this deep sense of pain. Some people have referred to the aspect of Chiron dancing between Saturn and Uranus as this sort of rainbow bridge that we can't quite see, although we can deeply feel it. So Saturn is known to bring a lot of hard experiences, Saturn is known to bring us a lot of obstacles and a lot of dif uh, difficult experiences in life. And Uranus is the planet known for higher wisdom, it's known for enlightenment and helping others, helping humanity as a whole to heal. So there's this idea that once we heal from these deep wounds that we feel and that we face, that we're crossing this rainbow bridge of enlightenment to then help heal others and help bring others over this rainbow bridge. It's dancing between the two, so there's this sense of urgency to get to the other side. There's a sense of urgency to, you know, take that leap of faith to heal yourself. And once we heal ourselves, and once we have, you know, crossed this rainbow bridge of Chiron, we can then help others come to the other side. Just because we work with our Chiron and just because we work toward healing our Chiron, that doesn't mean we will all of a sudden, you know, feel we're healed forever and we won't have any experiences come up. That just means we know how to navigate it and we know why we experience this in this lifetime. That's why I think for me personally, astrology has been such a helpful tool for liberating myself because there's been so much knowledge of understanding why I face the things I do in this lifetime. And Chiron is just another one of those tools. It helps you know where you may feel most wounded and less alienated. And it kind of gives you this sense of encouragement that you're not alone and that you have something to heal in this lifetime. And once you heal your Chiron, one of your biggest gifts in this lifetime is also being able to help others through it. It's kind of funny that one of our biggest wounds ends up being one of our biggest spiritual gifts. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about each sign and what each sign in Chiron feels like and what you face and how you deal with it in this lifetime. Chiron is really pulling us out of our comfort zone to face our deepest fears and to embrace these deeper fears and to work with them to achieve and to reach higher levels of consciousness. Once we understand where our Chiron is and how we can work with it, 
we then feel less insufficient and more liberated. Your Chiron will always remain, but the knowledge on how to dance with your Chiron and the knowledge on how to work with your Chiron always will remain. Alright, so we're going to get started here with Chiron in all 12 houses and 12 signs. I'm going to leave timestamps below so you can go right to your Chiron. If you don't know where your Chiron is, feel free to pause the video. Um, look up your birth chart. I'll leave a link below where you can go ahead and calculate your birth chart. Find out where your Chiron is and then come back to this video and we can talk about it. Chiron and Aries. And if I'm looking down, it's because I have my notes here. So if I'm not looking directly at the camera, please forgive me. So Chiron being in Aries, this is going to be the first house. And actually Chiron in the first three houses, which is going to be Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. Um, these are all going to be houses of the self. These are all going to be a little more sensitive to the self and sensitive to one understanding themselves on deeper levels. So Chiron and Aries or the first house, there's really going to be this wound of knowing who you are at the deepest level. The search for identity predominates here. These individuals are going to experience chirotic energy to their sense of self and of self-worth. Growing up, you may find that if you have this placement that you probably have overthought the way you come across to others or there's this lack of self-confidence about how you present yourself in this world. Aries Chiron is restless when it comes to understanding who they are in this world and why they are here. If you have this Chiron, there may have been a sense of rage in your home life as a child. You may have had a parent that expressed their anger or negative emotions in a really unhealthy way. And that may have led you to having fear or confusion about how you express your rage or your anger. So there may be this sense that you have suppressed anger. Maybe you don't deal with anger in the most healthy ways. You may have this feeling that you have trouble with initiating things. You may have this feeling that you can't start or begin projects. There's this feeling of karma of inaction. You have a hard time maybe initiating projects or beginning things or having the confidence that you can initiate things. Also with this Chiron, there may be some body insecurities because the first house is all about the self. It's all about the physical body. Um, so you may have had some body insecurities. Healing comes for Chiron and Aries when you surrender to your ego. When you surrender to that feeling that you aren't good enough, that you aren't worthy enough, that you can't initiate things in your life, and you allow your authentic self to shine through. When this sign is embodying their, their chirotic energy, these people are going to be very charismatic. They're going to be very unforgettable. They're going to be very lively. They're going to be true leaders of higher consciousness once they overcome or work with their Chiron. A lot of people with Chiron in Aries or the first house have this really amazing ability to become healers, to become hands-on healers because Aries always has this heat to them. So once they heal themselves, there's an extraordinary amount of healing to be done with the hands. Um, a lot of these people, once they evolve their Chiron, end up being hands-on healers. Things like massage, Reiki, acupuncture, all things that Chiron and Aries people end up becoming healers of. A lot of people with Chiron in the first house may have experienced bullying as a child of some sort of personal characteristic, which then ends up building low self-confidence or low self-esteem in this individual. Chiron in the first house have this feeling that they're useless. They don't necessarily feel like they are here for a purpose. They feel like they can't find their purpose. They feel that they don't have a good understanding of who they are and why they are here. They have a lot of chirotic energy to their sense of self and to their ego. And this can be a really hard chirotic energy to work with because you're always feeling this wound to who you are. So great ways to heal Chiron in Aries is to spend a lot of time by yourself, spend a lot of time alone getting to know yourself. A powerful tool for this placement is um, soul gazing, looking at yourself in the mirror for 
for amounts of time often to really see yourself, to really acknowledge yourself that you are here for a purpose and that your purpose goes beyond what the mental mind can comprehend. And a lot of these people, once they work with their Chiron and once they get this sense of uh, confidence in who they are, these people become really, really good at healing and helping others through this chirotic energy. These are going to be the kind of people that really, really value their family. They feel most comfortable at home with their family. Alright, so Chiron and Taurus, or the second house. These are going to be the types of people that feel wounded in their sense of what they have. Growing up, these people probably lived in a more physical or materialistic kind of plane. As a child, you may have felt that you didn't have enough. You maybe felt that you didn't, you didn't feel secure in what you had. Something that's very important for Chiron and Taurus is to have stability and to have physical safety. These individuals may have experienced a sense of loss early in life that causes them to have a hard time trusting in the abundance of life. These people may feel a wound to their sense of self and these people tend to devalue themselves. They don't necessarily see how great they are. People with Chiron and Taurus or second house may feel that they don't have what they need in life to do what they want to do. You may have this feeling that you don't have the resources you need. This Chiron placement tends to cling to possession or people because they may fear that they're going to lose what they have. Because Taurus is ruled by Venus, you may have a sense of body dysmorphia. This Chiron placement is a little bit slower to heal themselves from other Chiron placements because Taurus is a little bit stubborn and they're a little bit slower moving. Like, they're very powerful people, but they do things on their own time. So healing comes for you guys when you learn to feel safe in releasing attachments and materialistic things and learn to connect with something greater than you can see in this physical plane. Healing comes for you guys when you connect the mind, body, and spirit. When you allow yourself to live more than just a physical life. When you allow yourself to trust in the abundance of life. When you allow yourself to truly feel taken care of by something greater than this physical world we're living in. Chiron and Taurus, or the second house, may manifest by believing you're not good enough, by believing that you're worthless, by believing that you don't have any talents. And by believing so strongly in these things, you then attract situations that continue you in this vicious cycle of believing that you aren't good enough and believing that you don't have talent in this world. I know that a lot of people with this placement have uh, body dysmorphia or are really hard on their self-image. A lot of people with this placement have a unhealthy relationship with food um, because of this body dysmorphia. You know, this is not going to be everybody. Check to see where your Chiron is aspected, but I do know that this placement sometimes has unhealthy relationships to the self, then externalizing that in many areas of your life. This Chiron heals by attaching yourself emotionally from possessions and consciously practicing generosity. This Chiron heals by building a healthy relationship to financial matters. When we give to others, we receive. And by knowing that is so important to this Chiron because this Chiron unintentionally blocks themselves from receiving by unconsciously fearing that there's not enough abundance for them. Once this Chiron realizes that by giving you allow yourself to receive more, that is a huge lesson for this Chiron placement. Also another way that this Chiron heals is by believing in your self-worth and believing that you are enough and by believing that you have gifts to offer to the world. And by healing yourself, you then in turn help to heal others from these problems that you face. Alright, so Chiron and Gemini are the third house. 
You guys may feel this strong wound in the way you express yourself to others and the way you communicate. You may feel that it's hard to socially fit in or you may feel a fear that you don't socially fit in. As a child with this Chiron, you may have felt that you weren't heard in your early home life. You may have felt that you had a parent that didn't listen to you. Maybe you felt you had a teacher that didn't listen to you. You didn't feel that you had a safe place to express yourself and truly feel heard. With this placement, you may have been shy as a child, depending on your other placements in your chart. Um, and maybe it's not even that you were shy, but you had this fear of public speaking. You had this fear of the way you communicated in groups. Maybe as a child or even growing up, you experience a lot of nervousness around others. This placement is known to have a lot of speech impediments and a lot of speech disorders. A lot of this stems from nervousness. A lot of this stems from this feeling that you're going to come across in a way that you don't want to express yourself. This is going to be a placement that really underestimates their intelligence. These people often are extremely intelligent, although they're their biggest critic. You may feel undereducated compared to those around you, and you may fear to speak your truth. You may speak what others around you are saying in order to fit in. Growing up, you may have found it hard to believe in your talents, in your gifts, in your ideas, and in your thoughts. There may be this huge fear in public speaking. That may be something that you guys truly dislike, or that you truly fear, or that you truly try to avoid at all costs. So Chiron and Gemini, this is an, a very intelligent placement. These people have extremely intelligent minds, although they may not express these brilliant ideas they have in fear of being compared to others. They may keep some of their ideas or thoughts or expressions deep within. These people are going to find that they feel more comfortable expressing themselves on paper, writing, through art. And along with that, these people are extremely creative. As children, you guys may have been the ones to ask a lot of questions. You may have been very curious about everything going on around you. So healing comes for Chiron and Gemini or in the third house. When you begin speaking your truth and begin expressing your creative and unique perspectives. Healing comes when you embrace your intelligence. With this placement, you may find that you express yourself more clearly through nonverbal expression, whether that be art, whether that be dance, whether that be um, writing. These people have a lot of creative energy working with them, like I said earlier, and they may feel more safe to express themselves in other creative and artistic ways. These are going to be the kind of people that need to learn by making mistakes. These are very curious kinds of people. They learn through observation. They learn through experience. And usually Chiron here signifies being bullied or picked on as a child. And that may be another reason why this placement feels the need to suppress their voice, to suppress what they have. They think they're not good enough. They think that their expression isn't heard and that people devalue what they have to say, their truth. So usually this chirotic energy stems from a very early age and therefore their self-expression is usually suppressed. Chiron and Gemini, they heal when they express their authenticity, they heal when they believe that their voice is heard, when they believe in their unique perspectives. Chiron here can heal by practicing to speak in front of large groups or large audiences. And actually these people, once they learn to work with their Chiron, make unbelievable speakers. They bring very unique and vivid ideas to the table that spark creative energy in others. Um, they really have a way of speaking that inspires others to think out of the box. So Chiron and Cancer may experience this deep wound to how they were nurtured as a child. Chiron and Cancer individuals may have experienced a lack of love or nurture from a parent in early life. And I have my notes here if you guys see me looking down. You may have felt abandoned as a child. Maybe you witnessed your parents go through a nasty divorce or a nasty split up and that kind of left a sour taste in your mouth on what love truly was to you. 
Maybe you had a parent that was absent in nurturing you the way you needed. Chiron and Cancer individuals may find it hard to nurture themselves, to love themselves, or even to accept nurturing from others. And because of this unconscious wound that you may feel of feeling worth, unworthy of love from others, you may be very selfless when it comes to loving others because you deeply understand and you deeply know what it feels like to feel like you can't receive love yourself. So then in turn, you want to give love to everyone around you. You want to nurture those around you. But you may find it really hard to nurture yourself. You may find it really hard to receive nurturing from others. With this placement, you may feel that others don't understand the depth of emotion you feel within. You may feel that growing up you experienced emotions that highly affected your mental health. You may feel like the black sheep in your family. You may feel that others don't understand what you quite experience emotionally and this void in your heart that you feel may be hard to express. As a child, you may have never felt safe within yourself because you viewed the world as being somewhere that was not safe. Healing comes for you guys when you realize that your true home is within, when you turn to self-love, when you give yourself the love that you so deeply are seeking and the love that you so easily give to others. Once you help yourself, you can then help others because you intuitively understand the matters of the heart. And while you guys may experience a lot of emotional turmoil growing up, once you work to heal your Chiron, you then in turn understand the emotion of others very well and you can be an intuitive guide for others by showing them that it's okay to go within, it's okay to love yourself. The deepest healing of yourself will come when you really connect with your roots. When you deeply connect with things that you've neglected within yourself or emotions you may have neglected in yourself, when you start to go within and face these things as means to heal and really truly start loving yourself for all that you are and feel safe within yourself, that's when you truly will be able to heal and in turn help others. And by unlocking your Chiron, you're unlocking your power to, to feel nurtured, to feel safe in your own body. There's going to be a sense of a lot of nervous energy with Chiron and Cancer. With this placement, there's going to be some early childhood suffering that ends up scarring the psyche. And this is really going to be a lifetime of healing these scars. These people are extremely intuitive. They understand the emotions extremely well. When they learn to heal their Chiron, these people are some of the most intuitive people on the planet. These are healers. This is not an easy Chiron to take on. These people experience deep turmoil. These people know of pain because they've experienced it so deeply. They've experienced it so intensely. These people give so much of their hearts to others. They want to help everybody except themselves. And a lot of the time, others don't even realize that they're hurting in the inside because they hide it so well. They intuitively know very well when somebody else is suffering. And oftentimes, this person doesn't want to help heal themselves because they think that placing focus on themselves or helping themselves is selfish. All right, so that is all I have for you, Chiron and Cancer in the fourth house. So Chiron and Leo are the fifth house. You guys are going to feel a deep wound to your ego. So Chiron and Leo or fifth house individuals are usually considered old souls as these people are learning to detach from the wound of their egos. So the polarity of Leo being Aquarius, you're working with this Aquarian energy to evolve into the higher realms, to the higher self. The lesson of Chiron is to break free from Saturn, which is all about obstacles and overcoming obstacles to reach the dimensions of Uranus. Chiron in Leo signals a death-rebirth kind of struggle to transcend the ego, to develop higher will, and to connect with your higher self. As a child, Chiron in Leo, or the fifth house, individuals would feel like there's something really special about them. So from a very young age, Chiron and Leo individuals develop this sense of ego or feeling more worthy than others. So there's naturally going to be a need here to heal your inner child.
There may be a wound that develops with Chiron and Leo that may seek validation of others, they may seek attention, they may seek approval, to feel that they are worthy, to feel that they are successful, to feel that they are creative and talented. Chiron and Leo may express a lot of self-esteem issues. The greatest failing in life for Chiron and Leo fifth house energy is to go unnoticed for your creative talents. These people are extremely creative, yet they have this sort of wound to needing approval of this creative side of them. And so there's this kind of um, imbalance here of being extremely creative, but also needing approval. So when they feel that their creativity has gone unnoticed, there's a strong wound here to feel unworthy or to feel not good enough or to feel untalented. So healing comes for Chiron and Leo when you express your authentic self through creative self-expression. By choosing to believe in your talents and your gifts, there are many hidden gifts that when you do express yourself in these gifts that you hold, you therefore heal others, whether that be through art, whether that be through public speaking, whether that be through acting. You hold spiritual power to help heal the collective by bringing forth messages or creative expression of your authentic self. A lot of healing comes for Chiron and Leo fifth house energy when you really awaken your inner child, when you really tune into your inner child. And because these people usually have a very powerful inner child, sometimes suppressed, usually something very healing for fifth house Chiron is spending time with children because usually children remind Chiron and Leo individuals to really tune back into that inner child and really express what it wants to create. Um, that is all I have for Chiron and Leo. Now we're moving on to Chiron and Virgo, Chiron in the sixth house. So Chiron and Virgo experiences a deep wound to needing to perfect everything. Chiron and Virgo sixth house energy are very self-critical people. These people are very hard on themselves. Some astrologists claim that Chiron rules Virgo. So having your Virgo and Chiron can be extremely hard, but overcoming and working with your Chiron and Virgo can also be extremely rewarding. People with Chiron and Virgo tend to be very people-pleasing, and this can be extremely draining, especially if you're working with Virgo and other aspects of your chart. Virgo Chirons may have a distorted self-image. They may have an unhealthy relationship with food and with their bodies. A lot of Virgos can be hypochondriac, so they may pay very close attention to what they're putting in their bodies. They may have a very strict diet. They pay very close attention to um, their health and uh, what they're consuming. Chiron and Virgo energy may experience very chronic illness throughout life. A lot of Chiron Virgos deal with lower body issues in the stomach area, in the digestive area. Um, many people with Virgo and Chiron are like your vegetarians or your vegans. They pay very specific detailed attention on their diet and they do pay very close attention to what they eat because they have very sensitive digestion. Virgo and Chiron, sixth house energy, these individuals may be very hard on those around them, their family, their friends, people they love. And this is really mirroring how hard they are on themselves. This Chiron is not the easiest to deal with. You're constantly devaluing yourself. You're constantly being critical of yourself. You're constantly breaking yourself down. You're nitpicking yourself. And you outwardly reflect that onto others. So others may find this to be a little bit harsh. What they don't realize is that you're being twice as hard on yourself internally. And this is just manifesting outwardly. So one thing I've noticed about Chiron and Virgo is you guys do not like routine in the workplace. I find that a lot of people with this placement switch jobs often as they either don't, they feel like they are, they're not being appreciated in their workplace. They feel like their value is not being seen for what it is. If your Chiron is retrograded in Virgo, you are bringing in skill sets of being a healer in a past life that you are working to remember in this life. You're working to bring forth in this life. You probably even feel that you're meant to heal others. And a lot of people with Virgo in general are going to be past life healers. They're going to be healers of some sort and you're really going to feel this in your soul. You're really just going to feel like you're here to help the collective. You're here to help heal. But first, in order to help heal others,
Alright, so Chiron in Libra, if you have this placement in your natal chart, this is one of the most rare placements for Chiron to fall as Chiron spends the least amount of time in Libra. If you have Chiron in Libra, there may be a wound of having the sphere of intimate relationships in your life. And this may have stemmed from very early on in your life. In childhood, maybe it is you experienced a nasty divorce in your home life, or maybe you experienced your your parents go through a really nasty breakup or maybe you experienced um, some sort of relationship that didn't involve pure love and so you viewed connection or intimacy as something you feared rather than something you wanted to experience. Maybe you experienced an unhealthy relationship between your parents or maybe you felt betrayed by one of your parents. Individuals with Chiron and Libra may fear getting intimate or close with people that care about them. And these people may try to hide this wound by running from relationships. This Chiron may experience sabotaging intimate relationships by projecting your fears onto them. And out of nowhere, you may choose to run from a relationship or if you feel like you're getting too close or too intimate with the person you are with, you may choose to flee from the relationship altogether in fear of becoming too close to that person. With this Chiron, you may wear a mask to who you truly are in relationships. With Chiron and Libra, you may also feel a wound to feeling unattractive. You may feel that you're not beautiful or you do not possess beauty. Chiron and Libra may fear commitment in intimate relationships. With Chiron and Libra, there seems to be some blindness about who they are within karmic situations as they relate to others. And with that, they may stay in relationships that are no good for them. They may stay in relationships that are unhealthy or toxic for them longer than they wish to be. So these people deeply understand themselves when they understand their relation to others. They see themselves in others and that is how they learn best. By relating to others is the best way for Chiron and Libras to learn. Their relationships with others reflects back to them who they are and how they view the world. So healing comes for these natives when they seek deep understanding between themselves and others by realizing that your true soulmate is found within. When you focus deeply on yourself, you then project what it is you want to experience. When Chiron in Libra 7th house reconnects to their true self, they then in turn are able to heal through therapeutic relationships. 7th house Chiron signifies a dynamic of knowing the self through significant relationships on a personal level and they need encouragement to become more conscious of the potent effect they have on others so they can know that the response from others is their truest teacher. The highest octave of awareness about this position would be a complete mastery of the fact that others react to us as we see ourselves and that what we experience in our outer worlds is caused by our own thought. The key is to carefully analyze your relationships and to identify what the teachings are because Chiron in the seventh house learns best through others. They learn more about themselves through their relationships with others because Chiron is all about relationships. All right, so Chiron and Scorpio. If you have Chiron and Scorpio, usually there is a wound that you've experienced in early ages of your life. With Chiron in Scorpio, maybe you experienced the death of a parent or a very close family member early on in life, or maybe there was trouble in birth. With this Chiron, you maybe faced a tragedy early on in life that maybe left a scar on your psyche. Individuals with this Chiron may have dealt with near-death experience as a child. Chiron in the eighth house is not an easy placement to have. It's not an easy placement to deal with. Although there are rewards of working with this Chiron, you may have dealt with a family member that grieved over a loved one they have lost and you've almost felt burdened by this pain and you may have then taken on this fear of death or this fear surrounding death because of this grief you felt of a loved one. For some even, it may be ancestral trauma you're dealing with in this lifetime and you may have not even experienced it physically but you're still holding on to it ancestrally. It's still been passed down and you may feel like you're carrying this 
weight of the world on your shoulders and it may have to do with the past life. You may have experienced rejection or abuse as a child. And you may have this fear surrounding intimacy or sex altogether. Chiron in the eighth house is usually going to be sexually reserved. These people may have experienced sexual abuse growing up. You may experience nightmares or sleep paralysis. With this Chiron, you may just naturally feel the darker side of humanity. You may find that you have a hard time trusting others or letting others in. With this Chiron, you may have experienced a huge sense of betrayal in your life, which has led you to not trusting others very easily. So healing comes for you guys when you trust deeply against these dark beliefs that you may carry this will truly enlighten you, this will truly transform you. And by healing your Chiron, you are able to help heal others with your psychological wisdom by helping others overcome their own fears, by embracing their own depth of emotion, suppressed trauma, and reconnecting to the truth of their own psyche. Individuals with 8th house Chiron may feel that other people naturally feel comfortable telling you about their life, telling you about their dark secrets, burdening you with their you know dark stories. Chiron 8th house people have a really strong ability of healing because they deeply understand the psyche. These people make amazing psychologists and therapists. They understand people's motives. They understand why people do the things they do. So because 8th house is ruled by Pluto, these individuals may experience a lot of Plutonian karmic energy. So this is going to be about power, this is going to be about money, this is going to be about death, and this is going to be about sex. People with Chiron 8th house Scorpio energy are pretty secretive people. They don't really like people knowing what's going on with them. They don't always feel comfortable telling people about, you know, their deepest, darkest secrets. And um, they usually don't let too many people in. But once these people work to enlighten their Chiron, and once these people learn to heal their Chiron, these people make some of the most powerful people. The rewards of this Chiron are very powerful. These people make very powerful healers. These people make very powerful psychologists because these people truly understand the emotion and the psyche and what, pe what drives people. All right, so Chiron and Sagittarius. If you have your Chiron and Sagittarius, there may be a wound feeling restricted to having your own beliefs from a very early age in life. People with Chiron and Sagittarius usually have very different viewpoints, very different beliefs, orientations from their family or their community. You have a very strong will to not conform to the beliefs on religion or ideas of those you are surrounded by. Um, I have my notes here if you see me looking down. You may feel as if you didn't have parents that helped guide you in education. They didn't help push you. They didn't help encourage you. And these people might feel like they're not supported by their family and higher education matters. Although higher education to these people feels so important. And these people have a wound to feeling restricted. They may feel as if their freedom has been restricted by somebody or some circumstance in their life, whether that be having strict parents or whether that be going to a religious school. This is gonna be a placement where you may resent others if they don't listen or hear out your ideas or your beliefs. Probably are somebody that picks up on a closed-minded person very quickly. And you may fear this pain of confinement. And you may have struggled early on with religion or spirituality. You probably are an individual that didn't necessarily believe what was going on around you. You may have been in church and just didn't connect the way that everybody else did. Or you may have not believed what you were being preached to as a child. Therefore, there's this sense of confusion. Usually, people with Chiron and Sagittarius are going to be some of the first people in their families to graduate from college, or these are going to be the people who really value taking education to the next level. Chiron in Sagittarius, ninth house energy, may feel like the black sheep in the family. You may feel as if you were restricted freedom to explore your deep core beliefs. And healing comes for Chiron and Sagittarius when you stand firm to explore these beliefs pushing through your false boundaries and embracing your quest for discovery. These are going to be the kinds of people that are going to be rebellious on their journey. They're not going to take the conventional path. 
These are going to be the people that really explore where their heart is guiding them. They're not really focused on where everybody else is going. They're focused on what they believe in and the unconventional and to explore the unknown. In healing your Chiron, you unlock your own ability to help open the minds of others, to expand the mind of others, and to show others that taking a unconventional path or to exploring a path of the unknown or a path of the heart is okay. These are the kind of people that really yearn to see the world. They want to explore different cultures. They want to have their own beliefs on the world. They want to see everything for themselves and form their own beliefs. And they want to explore the philosophy of the world beyond what they've been told. Chiron's presence in the ninth house really signifies the crisis of connecting to their higher self in this incarnation. These people are going to be very interested in philosophy and spirituality and they will be open-minded to exploring all different ideas, all different religions. They will probably not be confined to one, but they'll be open-minded to exploring all of them. These people tend to feel driven by knowing ultimate truths and conveying them to others. These people really enjoy traveling. They really enjoy feeling the energies and connecting with the energies and the people of all different parts of the world. This placement of Chiron is truly an embodiment of the body and the soul. So Chiron in Capricorn 10th house energy, these individuals may feel a strong wound that was created in early life. These are going to be your born survivors. Chiron in the 10th house may indicate some sort of emotional wound to how he or she perceives his or her reputation and how they feel they come across in the eyes of others. People with Chiron in Capricorn may have experienced trauma as a child. They may have been neglected. They may have been abandoned by a parent. They may have been abused. They may take on a lot of responsibility from a young age, and these individuals may have had to parent a parent growing up. There's a sense of responsibility with Chiron and Capricorn, and you just feel like your childhood was stolen from you. You may find it hard to feel accepted by those in authority. With Chiron and Capricorn, you may have had a dad that was very successful. You may have had a parent figure that is very successful and you may find that it's hard to reach their levels of expectation. They may be very hard on you or they may have neglected you as a child because they were so head in their work. You may feel as if they don't believe in you. You may feel as if you don't meet their expectations or you don't meet their standards of hard work. People with Chiron and Capricorn are going to be really hard on themselves. This is going to be a placement where others may gravitate toward you for guidance or for parenting because they really sense your inner strength. They've really seen what you've overcome. There may be this illusion to Chiron and Capricorn that you are not worthy of hard work, that you are not good enough to be successful. And there's kind of this imbalance here with Capricorn and Chiron where they either overwork themselves to death or they don't work at all. These people are probably going to switch jobs often if they feel that others around them don't see their worth or don't appreciate their work ethic. And there may be times where Chiron and Capricorn individuals may feel as if they were set up to fail. They feel like obstacles burden them. Chiron and Capricorn can be their own worst critic. They are so hard on themselves. Healing comes when you surrender to these false beliefs that you aren't good enough, that you aren't worthy of achieving success. When you establish your authority and when you establish your power and when you believe in your power you then in turn help others in believing in their own inner strength and in their own power. Usually Chiron Capricorns do best when they're their own boss. Healing comes for Chiron and Capricorn when they can learn to laugh at themselves, when they can learn to see the lighter side of things, when they can tune into their inner child. So Chiron and Aquarius 11th house energy if you have your Chiron here in your natal chart, you are probably going to feel a deep wound in your sense of belonging. And there may be this fear that you're never going to be accepted as you are. You may have this fear of standing out in a crowd. You may have a fear of expressing your uniqueness, expressing your unique identity in this world.
there may be some wound to fearing rejection from a group. You may not speak your truth in order to not feel rejected by a group. Individuals with Chiron and Aquarius may have a hard time believing in their individuality and expressing their unique and highly innovative and intelligent ideas. There may be this sort of awkwardness to Chiron and Aquarius because this placement tends to overthink how they come across to others. This placement is very hyper aware of what other people perceive them to be and so they're very sensitive to how other people perceive them. These people fear being isolated but love to be alone. So the ideal situation for Chiron in Aquarius or 11th house energy would be to be in a house full of people but everybody in their own room doing their own thing. As children they were probably in their own little world. Oftentimes Chiron and 11th do not enjoy being in the spotlight. They would prefer to be behind the scenes in very innovative and creative positions. These are going to be your inventors. These are going to be very innovative people. Chiron in 11th tend to avoid very close and personal or emotional relationships. Healing comes for Chiron in the 11th house when you embrace what makes you unique from a crowd and when you understand that others accept you for who you truly are. Oftentimes, Chiron in the 11th house are going to be people that stand for minorities and usually these are going to be your people with unique sexual orientation or unique sexual expression. These are going to be your people who create humanitarian movements. So once you work to heal Chiron in Aquarius, by embracing your uniqueness and by your very innovative ideas and by your strong want to help humanity, you then help to heal others and help to heal humanity by expressing these unique and creative ideas. And usually universal or humanitarian causes help you feel a sense of belonging. Because astrology is ruled by the sign of Aquarius, these are gonna be your people who are astrologists. These are gonna be your people who seek astrology for healing. Astrology can be very therapeutic to Chiron and Aquarius individuals. Healing is going to come for Chiron in the 11th when you practice a more inclusive attitude, when you practice affirmations that you are wanted in this group and you belong in this group and you are accepted in this group. And healing comes when you practice sharing these innovative ideas with others and not being afraid to embrace your uniqueness and to embrace all this intelligent information that comes through you guys are brilliant people and once you truly embrace that help to heal the world in really big ways so chiron and pisces 12th house energy chiron in the 12th is going to deal with a lot of past life trauma chiron in the 12th house is a lot of subconscious fears and a lot of this is stemming from past life events past life trauma that follows them into this life to heal to look at more closely, to have stronger discernment with. Chiron and Pisces may deal with seasonal depression, they may deal with cynicism. There may be a wound here in feeling that the world is too harsh of a place to live. There may be a wound in this individual's sense of faith to themselves and in humanity. Chiron in the 12th house may be very sensitive to this world and they may believe that this world is filled with endless suffering. Chiron and Pisces people tend to really suffer from the fact that they feel that earth is not a safe place to be. They they constantly have this burden or this collective pain of what's going on around this world at all times. And because of all of this destruction that is happening on Earth, sometimes Chiron Pisces people tend to lose faith in a higher power. Sometimes they lose faith in a higher being. And when they do feel this sense of loss to a higher connection, they do feel this sense of loss from God, source. They feel this huge sense of loss. They feel this huge void in their heart because they're not connected to source and they're not connected to eternal healing. They unconsciously are blocked off from believing that this world is a safe place and believing that they can still be love and light in a world filled with darkness. And so Chiron in 12th house usually ends up attracting people that need healing and they usually attract people that need help. 
because subconsciously they think this world is in need of healing and so they're putting out this energy that they need to attract people that need to be healed because they believe many people need to be healed. There may be this fear with Chiron Pisces that they may feel overwhelmed by their emotions. They may fear their emotions. They may not ever know what to expect within their emotions. Healing comes for you when you connect with your spirituality and your higher self and you trust that you're being guided. Healing comes for Chiron and Pisces when you embrace the emotions that are guiding you. Chiron in the 12th house make really strong healers. These are really intuitive people. These people really understand what's going on around them. They feel things really deeply. Chiron in the 12th house may experience difficulties in creating in developing imagination and comprehending the universe altogether. Chiron in the 12th may feel wounded in developing a relationship with Source, with God, with higher power, with the universe, and therefore may struggle with feelings of loneliness. Chiron in the 12th may have issues with personal boundaries. They may have issues with other people walking all over them. And with Chiron in Pisces, there may be this sense of never really feeling grounded, kind of feeling the sense of being rootless. Healing comes for you guys when you let go and you trust in the universe, when you let go and you trust that you're being taken care of. Healing comes when you tap into your creativity. Art can be a really good tool for Chiron in the 12th to really explore your imagination, to really develop your imagination. Meditation is a really powerful tool for Chiron and 12th individuals as this helps the individual to feel more closely connected to spirit and when the individual feels more closely connected to spirit they feel free and safe to explore their spirituality and by exploring their spirituality they feel safe to ascend although this is a hard chiron to work with you guys have this extremely powerful energy to heal others by getting in tune with your own spirituality you then unlock the ability to help heal others healing comes for chiron and pisces the 12th house when you truly integrate spirit in your everyday practice. Learning more about spirit and learning more about energy and learning more about source to connect you back to oneness. I truly believe that when Chiron in the 12th works to heal themselves, they are some of the strongest healers on this planet. All right guys, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that you guys took something from this video. If this video resonated with you, feel free to like and subscribe. I would love to hear back from you guys in the comment section. If you guys want to book a personal reading or a Reiki session with me, I will have all my information below. Until then, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Take care.